Hello Indie Game fans, after a small week of releases due to the Steam Nix Festival, games are back in force with a selection of both bigger and smaller titles of interest in this edition of Indie Gaming This Week. Let's begin with Gunbog Dark Matters, a pixel art action platformer with some sick neon hues. This has you harnessing the power of dark energy in order to destroy an army of alien soldiers where the combination of action and platforming sure looks like fun. Sure, it might not be the most innovative title out there, but it looks well made, so if you're a fan of this genre, do check it out. We have a rare traditional turn-based roguelike releasing this week in Soulash, one that looks to be very true to the genre roots in being a turn-based, grid-based entry. There is a fog of war, which is dependent on which direction your character is facing, with a number of playable races and classes as well. It is an open world entry and is not just about delving into dungeons, where an added facet of interest is that this has you playing as evil characters such as a warlock, lich, necromancer, or a goblin inquisitor, which is something that I love in games, flipping the traditional hero script on its head. As such, it is certainly one for fans of the genre, and if you're not familiar with the traditional roguelike, might be worth a look as well. I covered the prologue demo of What Lies in the Multiverse a couple of weeks back, since I quite like the trailer and the pixel art of this puzzle platformer, with the full game releasing this week. It is a humorous entry that takes you on a zany adventure through the multiverse, resulting in a chaotic, dimension-hopping adventure that sure looks like fun. It does borrow elements from a couple of games such as Guacamelee's Dimension Shifting and what looks like Celeste-style star blocks, but combines all of this with what looks to be an intriguing story and good writing, making it a title of interest. I've constantly been seeing zombie rollers, pinball heroes on lists of upcoming roguelite titles, but its release was always TBA, where somehow this title is finally releasing this week. Interestingly, it is pinball with combat elements, where there are bosses and enemies on the table itself instead of bumpers, where as a casual fan of pinball, this is of interest to me. I like the art style and the variety of character classes, where adding combat or RPG elements to classic games will always get my interest. Hmm. 
Frank ever wanted was a good job, a family, and a nice place to live. We do have a very interesting sequel releasing this week in Beholder 3, following on from the original in 2016 and the sequel in 2018. Where if you're not familiar, you play as the landlord of an apartment building in a totalitarian state, having to spy on your tenants and to report any misdemeanors to the ministry. The first two games were more like Papers, Please, in that you had to do what you had to do in order to protect your family, where in this sequel, it adds an aspect where you're trying to work your way up the hierarchy in the ministry as well, having to spy on and scheme against other co-workers and superiors, being one of the more unique series out there which is worth a play. My name's Grady, that is your inspection desk. You are a product inspector. We have a huge number of bigger games this week, beginning with Aperture Desk Job, a release from Valve of all people, but as a free game that is supposed to showcase the Steam Deck, you making it bad? worth a look. Well, your job is bad. Any pro gamer tips for this? When I heard that the Conan the Barbarian license was being turned into a roguelite, I did have my doubts about the co-op focus, but it looks pretty good so we shall see with the release of Conan Chop Chop this week. Who's this little girl? Is she wants right. a teddy bear! Alright, uh, we'll keep an eye out for teddy bear. Trainer! Uh, it's a trainer! <laughs> we are kitted out now. Guys, I gotta get back to work. Ugh, what happened? The invaders arrived, started taking over the world, transforming it. Something's not right, I feel... I feel weak. You're still badly hurt. It'll be a while before you get all your strength back. Developer Piranha Bytes do have a reputation of making B-tier games, which do have their share of fans which turns them into cult classics, having made titles like Risen and Elex from 2017, where we are looking at Elex 2 here, a third-person RPG in a science fantasy world, where I do expect its share of jank, but should somehow manage to find a way to be compelling as well. From the beginning then. I did cover Little Orpheus during the Steam Next Festival, where this cinematic platformer gets PC and console versions this week, looking like one of the most gorgeous titles of the week. And it began like this. With our world in danger once again, a new hero must arise. A hero that will reshape our world. I do love the original Puzzle Quest, and through Trials and Tribulations, we are somehow getting Puzzle Quest 3 this week. So hopefully it is not free to play garbage, but I'm not holding my breath. Be that hero. We get the latest entry in one of the most beloved first-person shooters this week in Shadow Warrior 3, a series with an irreverent sense of humour and non-stop action, looking to have unique enemy designs and a fun variety of weapons, and since it is being published by Devolver, I do expect a certain level of quality here. If killing you guys is wrong, I don't want to be right. So pumped up right now. It slices, it dices. Listen, I know your experience probably differs than mine, but I am having a blast. Eat 
this! Unstoppable, baby, yeah! Whoa! <laughs> cool party, dudes! Feel the thunder! Whoa! The Wang still got it! Smaller games begin with Battle Cry of Freedom, a first and third person action title set during the American Civil War. We've heard positive feedback on this based on its demo, so it may be worth a look. Yes, while Horde Core is another title set in a zombie post-apocalypse, it is a side-scrolling shooter that looks pretty fun, although it sure does hit all those genre tropes. We do also get Steam and Xbox versions of Legend of Extona being ported over from mobile where this strategy RPG does look pretty decent. I previewed Moonray a couple of times when looking at upcoming Souls-like titles, but this releases in early access this week, looking to have an interesting sci-fi world that does look to have rough edges as well. If you love classic point-and-click adventure games, Pen's Quest is one to get, where it is one of those days where getting dressed and leaving the house for work seems like an impossible task looking to be an absurd and humorous entry. One of the cutest titles of the week is Pets at Work, a vibrant co-op puzzle platformer where a dog and a cat must work together to get to the end of the level, looking like fun with a friend.
Queen Chantman is a pixel art side-scrolling tower defense game where you're protecting the Lich Queen as she drains the life from princesses, getting revenge on those who inflicted a curse on her many years ago, looking like a wonderful alternative to the top-down versions of this genre. We have the Steam release of Witchcrafty as well, a decent looking Metroidvania entry where elemental magic is key in the Metroidvania exploration, looking like a wonderful smaller title. This is Pinewood, the festival of dreams. So many people listening to us. Man, that atmosphere. The journey of a lifetime. We were on our way, but did we make it? Let's kick off the top 5 with A Musical Story, a rhythm game set in the 1970s with a fantastic art style, combining familiar gameplay with a narrative that looks to be worth experiencing. If you love open-world survival crafting sandbox titles, one of interest is A World of Little Legends. Looking to be like Stardew Valley crossed with Terraria, since you are gathering resources, building your base, crafting tools and weapons, and venturing even further out to explore. I love the look of this game since it looks like the best of the 16-bit era, and with all the mining, farming, fishing, and combat elements that you have come to expect, is definitely a title of interest. I do wonder how much content there is in the early access launch, but if this follows Terraria, could potentially be another huge player in the space. I did preview Far Changing Tides when looking at upcoming games of the month, being the sequel to one of my favourite games in Far Lone Sales, and looks to be familiar but different enough to warrant a sequel, where the original had one of the best world building in games, making me excited for this. The physics sandbox title, Instruments of Destruction, has one of the best trailers, so enjoy the destruction. Are you ready to start playing with physics? Eradication, no pre game gimmicks. Well, come enjoy the satisfying sensation. The forceful destruction, annihilation. Islands, horrid shanty towns, concrete and steel. Let's tear it all down, let alone ancient moons. Just let them stand tall. Historically important, so they better not fall. Isometric viewpoints, the tilt shift blood. Some explosions, collapses occurring. Everything must fall. Ignore all obstruction. Instruments, yeah. Of destruction. Yellow and black, heavy duty creation. Devices created for complete devastation. Designed for awesome architecture reduction. Instruments of destruction.
title covered many times within a short time span on this channel is Heroes Hour, since I did preview it two weeks ago and was sponsored by them last week, and here it is again in Indie Gaming this week. But that is truly because I am very excited for this. It is the spiritual successor to Heroes of Might and Magic, which is one of my favourite series of all time, and does have an impressive 11 factions to play with. I always loved the castle building and exploration of that series, but the twist with this game is that combat is now in real time with all units on screen, looking like a fantastic title all around, taking the number one spot. For more pixel art titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.